Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone has had a good week or two weeks. I'm hoping this video is up within the two weeks of my last video. Really trying to get back on my YouTube game. So hopefully future me has got her shiz together. So today we're going to be talking about xenoestrogens. So xenoestrogens are natural or synthetic substances which can be found in external things. So um, it might be pesticides or it might be your cleaning products. And we're going to be talking about all the places they're hidden today. Um, basically they can have a um, estrogen mimicking like property. Um, so they can definitely contribute to hormonal imbalance. Balances. The other thing to also know about exenoestrogens is our body loves to store them. So it's not like we touch these things and our body detoxes and just gets rid of it. No, we love to store it away actually in our fat cells. And the issue with this is if we have a really high exposure to these things on a regular basis and our body is actually storing them away in our fat cells, the, this building up basically can really contribute to issues with our reproductive system. So we're talking about hormonal imbalances. So in today's video, I want to talk about exenoestrogens a little bit more and give you some really easy little switches. Like nothing that's like, oh my God, this is a massive, massive, crazy lifestyle change. Like, no, these are like small little things where it's more so just being aware and making a better choice in the moment that can significantly impact um, your exposure to these things and yeah, really just helped you to support your health. Now, my personal view on this topic is just trying to reduce your overall load. I know, hands up, I do not avoid xenoestrogens in all the places that they are hidden. I do not avoid every single source, definitely not. Like there's definitely some makeup products in my bag that wouldn't be considered on the natural side. Um, but what I focus on is really reducing my overall load. Okay, so we're gonna kick it off with plastics. Plastics are definitely up there as one of the biggest exposures of these xenoestrogens. So the first thing is cling film. Cling film needs to go in the bin. Maybe some of you call it plastic wrap, maybe. I'm not too sure what everyone calls it. But yeah, the plastic stuff that you wrap around your food needs to go in the bin. That is just a completely unnecessary exposure to plastics. We have so many better alternatives now. So something that I use are these beeswax um, wraps. I've got actually a bowl here where this is from my fridge. So these beeswax food wraps are such a great alternative. Um, these ones that I have are 100% beeswax. They've got pine resin and jojoba oil. Um, yeah, these are all natural. They don't contain any plastic. So you're not going to have any of that xenoestrogen worry. Um, also, the great thing about these as well is they're reusable. So that's another little topic of conversation is that plastic wrap is so wasteful and it's plastic which you're just using one it's, it's single use really um so these are a much much better option yeah you just literally rinse them off with some cold water to clean them when you're done with them and yeah they keep your, your food super super fresh now another thing i just want to tell you about cling film as well um which is another reason why you don't want to use it is that like i said about xenoestrogens being stored in fat cells um, if you wrap cling, fa cling, fa cling film around, let's say, fatty foods, um, the fatty foods could also absorb more of those xenoestrogens from the plastics as well. So that's another reason why you definitely, with fatty foods, don't want to put them within anything plastic. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is actually heating your food. So say you have got your lunch, for example, you've taken it to work, and um, the one thing you do not ever want to do is heat food in plastic, okay? Do not heat food in your Tupperware box. Take it all out, put it in a glass container, whatever you have, dish, and cook your food in that. Never cook food in plastic. Another thing also to put on top of this, never drink water out, out of a plastic bottle that's been in the sun. I mean, firstly, we don't wanna be drinking our water from plastic bottles anyway. That's a really easy switch. So instead of a plastic bottle, I always recommend um, going for something like a chili bottle, something similar, something that just is not plastic. Um, it's definitely gonna be worth that investment. And also a bottle like this is gonna be much more resistant if you like, for example, if you have left it accidentally in, in the sun and the sun's coming through the window or something but yeah with heat if you are drinking water from a plastic bottle and let's say you've accidentally left it in your car and then you know you go to drink it actually that heat in the water and the plastic will absorb more of that into the water and then you're going to drink that all back Six. now i want to move to cleaning supplies so another place where you can actually find these xenoestrogens are in a lot of the chemicals used in generic cleaning supplies so whether it be your bleach that you're using or what you're cleaning your kitchen tops with um, and also dish um, washer soap. So this is another one that actually has just come to my mind. Do think about that because obviously whatever you're washing your plates with and then you're going to eat your food from that plate as well. So definitely invest in more of a, you know, a better natural brand when it comes to your cleaning supplies. And these are easy switches because this is just a matter of just 
making a better choice when you're purchasing, purchasing really. In terms of the kitchen, um, recently I've been really liking this brand called Neat. Um, this is actually a new one because I need to refill my, um, I think this is my bathroom, my bathroom cleaner. Um, but Neat is a really cool brand. I found them actually firstly in Waitrose, but I also saw they do them on Well Easy as well. By the way, actually all these products that I speak about in today's video, pretty sure pretty much all of them you'll find on Well Easy. Um, that health store, which I've spoken about a lot. I'm not like working with them, by the way. I do really want it that clear because I speak about them a lot. I just genuinely do really love them. And I think it's so great. And if there's a place where you guys can save money on this kind of stuff, I'm going to be talking about it and sharing it. Um, but yeah, I noticed that you can get Neat on there. Actually, I think I got this one from Well Easy. Neat is really cool because you just get these little concentrates and then you get a bottle, um, you put it in and you fill it with um, however much water they say, shake it up and there's your cleaner. Some other brands that I really like. Um, so these are my um, washing brands. So what I do my clothes in. So I do Method. I really like this one, which is the Orchid Fruit. Um, smells amazing. And then I also really like Ecova as a brand. So I use Ecoba for their um, dishwashing um, soap and also like dishwasher tablets as well. Um, also, they do some great, both of these actually do some really good cleaning products as well. Like, you know, bathroom cleaner, glass cleaner, all that kind of great stuff. Their range is absolutely massive. But these are going to be much, much better options over like just your generic brands. Um, obviously, in other countries, you'll probably have similar brands like as an alternative. So it's just about having a look what is available um, in the area that you are. I do also want to just say as well, I think as well, clean cleaning products like for your washing is also very important because of course like you know we're wearing our clothes every single day this is touching our skin constantly and remember your skin is your largest organ so we are absorbing everything as well so it may be something that you don't necessarily think about but actually just a small switch like this can really really improve your exposure to these things okay the next thing that you can also consider is actually your cookware so what are you cooking your food in um, a really common thing that everyone goes for is these non-stick pans however non-stick although it's really appealing of course it is non-stick the chemicals that they use to make it non-stick aren't so great. I'm gonna put the name of it on the screen because like you'll understand, I'll butcher the pronunciation of that. But yeah, this can definitely affect us health-wise. I believe even, was it Teflon? I think the brand actually got sued for it. I'm, I, I think I read about that somewhere ages ago. Don't quote me on that, but I think they, they did. Do consider and think about what are you actually cooking your food in? Because remember like, you know, it's all great us focusing on all the food, but if our food is absorbing all this rubbish from all the stuff we're cooking it in, that's not so great either. Um, if your pan is starting to wear away and actually like the paint or anything's like peeling back, that's like massive red flag, like definitely time to go change your pan because um, the different layers, actually some of those can release certain toxins as well, which um, can be really not be great for us either. So yeah, just think about your cookware and uh, maybe if it's time to maybe update and upgrade. Okay, the next tip is definitely for the women out there and it's a really simple little switch, uh, but something that I think sometimes can go like um, a mist basically and it is our sanitary product so tampons pads all of these kinds of things what you may not be aware is that some of these um generic brands are heavily um embossed with like plastics and certain things and materials within the pads and that's in a very intimate area particularly if you're using like a tampon that's going up you like if that's filled with loads of chemicals and fragrances and all of these things you know I mean like that that's not going to be doing us any good really really do consider the quality and the types of pads and sanitary products you are buying my favorite brand is i think it's natural natural cure i'll put it on the screen and i'll of course link these all down below um i use their tampons their pads all of that kind of stuff um yeah really really like them so the next thing i want to talk about is water because this is a really key thing because we bathe in it we drink it every single day our exposure is very very constant to water the thing is of water and it depends on the country everyone's a little bit different but there's so many components that we get exposed to through our water supply but things that i'm really aware of is one fluoride so fluoride can affect thyroid function a little bit so i'm always really cautious on that one um another one is um like the chlorine and all the things that go in there to kill all the bacteria and make it clean like when you actually think about water it is actually a bit rank like because water is recycled so the other thing that you've got a question of is like the byproducts of like medications that can still be in the water like there was actually um you know studies that they looked at and um, birth control still being in some of the water supplies good water filter is something that i personally think is worth every investment now there's going to be different you know price points depending on where your budget is um i 
think something is better than nothing. So if your budget is maybe only allowing something quite small, like a, a jug, for example, like that's a great start. It's something, do you know what I mean? We actually, for Christmas, our Christmas present to each other, we were like, let's go half on a water filter. Um, so it's actually behind me here. I have an Aqua True. Um, I really, really love it. It's The quality of it has been amazing. It's through an osmosis. Um, method so the only thing with osmosis is, is it cleans and purifies the water so much that the minerals do kind of get lost so that's the only thing is that if you're really concerned about that you can remineralize your water but i kind of focus on minerals um with, with kind of other areas of my diet and everything anyway okay the next place where you can find extended estrogens are in pesticides and anything that is being sprayed all over our food and um, it's all of these chemicals and this is where we can get that extended estrogen exposure it's not realistic i think for everyone to be buying 100 organic and also i'm not gonna lie with the way inflation is at the minute like i'm not buying 100 organic that's for sure because it is so expensive at the moment like living costs everything it's just crazy the world we're living in at the moment um so what i would just say on this point is it's more so you know look at maybe like the clean 15 dirty dozen it may be just making um you know those kind of choices there might be the odd thing that you just buy organic and then some things you don't it's just again looking at that overall load okay the next place i want to talk about is fragrances and um, in particular you know if you're someone who's always lighting candles or you know diffusers on constantly or using loads of air fresheners these can be a really key place for the exposure of these xenoestrogens so some small switches in this area might be maybe considered buying more natural candles or even like a starting point is reducing how often you're burning these things or how long you're burning these things for and that could be also a starting point okay and then another switch i'm also going to throw in as well is your deodorant um something that i'm really big on is that lymphatic system and under your armpits that is actually one of our uh, key detoxing points and uh, we have a lot of lymph nodes underneath our armpits so what you are putting all under there is a deodorant if that is filled with you know loads and loads of chemicals and oh my god aluminium as well like really definitely make sure your deodorant is aluminium free um if it's loaded with all this stuff you're absorbing that straight in into your system under the armpits it's such a delicate area i'm gonna wrap it up there i think for this video because that is a lot of tips that i think are a really good starting point um by all means there's going to be obviously more than this and i feel like you can never really stop when it comes to this area so i really hope that this video has been helpful and and um, interesting for you please do give it a thumbs up if you have found it um, that way if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel so don't miss any future videos and yeah i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one Mwah. bye